Hey bibs! <laughs> we're sitting on the floor today because that's the vibe that we're going for. If you're new here, my name is Michelle. This is Actuarial, my actuarial YouTube channel. I'm also not quitting my job currently. But that doesn't mean we can't look for a new job. Amongst all the I like my job reasons to not quit my job, I also have a few mental hurdles with regards to not quitting my job, one of which is I don't have a resume. The last time that I applied for a job was when I was applying for an internship at the company that I work for now, back in 2012. So it probably said things like peer tutor and taught swimming lessons. Another reason why I'm not quitting my job is because imposter syndrome, like I feel like it's a cliche, but we all, or a lot of us really feel it, where it kind of feels like I don't actually know what I'm doing in my job, but I somehow tricked my colleagues into thinking that I know what I'm doing. And so if I go somewhere else, they're going to see that I don't actually know what I'm doing and then everything is gonna be chaotic. So, yeah, um, I'm not quitting my job today or anytime soon, or maybe I will. No, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. Okay, I thought it'd be fun just to do a little online job search and see what my options are. And then maybe in a future video, I would update my resume, and then I wouldn't feel as trapped in my job. I like my job, but sometimes feeling like I can only have this job makes me feel a little bit claustrophobic. And maybe just removing those barriers would make me feel a little bit better. And maybe it'll help you guys see where to look for actuary jobs in Canada. Like I often say on my Actuarial Instagram page, at Actuarial, same way it's spelled here, you should follow me. If I were going to look for a job, I would start by going to the ASNA Instagram page. I would look at who the main sponsors are for ASNA, and then I would say people who are sponsoring ASNA, which is a actuarial student conference in Canada, are people who also probably want to hire actuaries in Canada. So. We've got this page of 2022 ASNA convention sponsors open. Um, we're gonna limit ourselves mostly to property and casualty insurers because I don't really want to go into life, but maybe we could check one or two and see if there's any, anyone who's a life company that would seem interesting. So um, the main sponsor or the grand patron is the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. They do not hire actuaries. Also, the Society of Actuaries and the CAS, those are all three just actuarial societies. They're not hiring. Manulife and Munich Re are the two other diamond sponsors. Manulife is Fully Life. Munich Re, I'm not sure if they have a PNC branch. Maybe we'll check and see if they have any jobs. Should we start with Munich Re? Let's check. Maybe they have no jobs and this is gonna be very embarrassing. Munich Re careers. IT and tech, no. Underwriting, no. Internet of things, no. Cyber, no. Actuary. I'm an actuary. Actuaries analyze the financial side of risk. We do! They're correct. Natural disasters, sudden production stoppages, cyber attacks. The role of Munich Re's actuaries is to determine the amount of a financial loss before it can even occur. Ooh, spicy. Look at this. Oh my gosh, okay, get to know these people. Okay, I just wanna see, I just wanna see the job posting, what they look for in actuaries. Strong financial knowledge and sense for business. Okay, um, I would say I have medium low sense for business and low financial knowledge, so not a good start. Excellent communication and problem solving skills. Yeah, I'll give myself that one. Willingness for interdisciplinary cooperation. I hate working with other people. Does this let me filter on location? Canada. AVP, model development, probably not. Senior actuarial associate, property and casualty. They do have property and casualty, rock on. Actuarial associate is probably beneath me. I don't know what my job level is. Um, I have seven years of full-time experience and I am a fellow, so I don't know what their job titles are. Sometimes people ask me, like, what's the difference between this job title and this job title? And I just have to say, like, it's very company dependent. Um, okay, would I be an actuary or a senior actuarial associate? 
independently priced treaty reinsurance opportunities, effectively communicate to underwriters pricing and key assumptions that I can do, um, perform and review facultative reinsurance, primary single risk in managing general agent pricing as required. I don't really know anything about reinsurance. I mean, like I learned about it on my exams, but I finished my exams in 2015? No, 2017. So it's been five years since I um, took exams on reinsurance just because it's not what I do every day, so I'd have to relearn, challenge existing processes. I love challenging existing. There is nothing that brings me more joy than finding a stupid process and being like, that's dumb. Peer reviews, sure. Okay, so what do they want? FCAS, FCIA, Bachelor in Actuarial Science, yes, and then five plus years, I've got that. Strong verbal communication, presentation, and negotiation skills. Check. Ability to work with all areas of the company collaboratively to achieve results under tight deadlines. I do not like the tight deadlines. That bit. I don't like the idea that, like, they might set tight deadlines from the get-go and be like, you have to work crazy hours. I think I could get that job. Even though I don't know anything about reinsurance, I'm pretty confident that I could learn about reinsurance. I just don't necessarily like the idea of um, tight deadlines. That kind of a turnoff. Next company. All right, moving on to the gold sponsors, because we're gonna just, we're gonna follow the flow of people who are more generous to less generous. Um, so our gold sponsors, we have Canada Life, Sun Life, Intact, and Huawan You Saw. So the first two are life companies, maybe we'll do life at the end, um, but we got Intact and Huawan You Saw, which are both property and casualty insurers. So let's start with Intact. Intact Careers. Ooh, looks like they're hiring students. If any of you are looking for a job, now seems like a good time. Um, actuarial. Ooh, it's the first one. Probably because it's with A. 10 opportunities. Catastrophe modeling analyst. No, thank you. Senior actuarial analyst in Hong Kong. Too far. Consultant actuarial Toronto. Yes. Actuarial analyst. Okay. Senior actuarial analyst. Sure. Consultant actuarial. All right. So it looks like they've got a few duplicate jobs, but let's start with this one in Toronto because that's where I live. From coast to coast, our inspiring colleagues are at the heart of what we do best. Bless them. Um, we need you. We rely on your expertise. Cool. Actively participate in the coaching and training of actuarial and analysts. Is that supposed to just say actuarial analysts? I don't know. Maybe they need to work on their spell check. Work autonomously on challenging strategic projects in areas such as rate making, reinsurance, corporate planning, data science, reserving, and more. Sure. Um, lead large scale projects. Okay. Um, demonstrate your leadership by contributing to business strategy, okay? Provide guidance to your colleagues, okay? What I bring to the table. Let's check my skill set. University degree, got that. Certifications in mathematics, actuarial, yes. Five or more years of actuarial experience, got it. Good knowledge with SAS, VBA, R, or Python? SAS, yes. VBA, maybe. R and Python. Desirable competencies, adaptability, no, innovative, no, analytical, yes, decision making, sometimes, critical thinking, I hope so, stellar communication, I try, planning and organizing, love it, team oriented, sometimes. I could do this job, but it doesn't really look like they're looking for that much. They're just looking for an actuary who has actuarial experience. If you've got actuarial experience, maybe you should apply. Let's see what Wawanisa is bringing. Wawanisa careers. Respectful, challenging, and rewarding. Actuarial consultant, senior actuarial consultant in Montreal, consultant R&D in Toronto, consultant national initiatives in Toronto, consultant reserving excellence in Toronto. Oh, they've got lots of jobs. Okay, so I think they've got R&D, national initiatives, reserving, insurance risk management, or insights as options. That's a lot of variety. Also, it seems like they're hiring a lot of people. Insights can be fun because I do enjoy just an analytics role of just playing around, um, but I think I'm most curious about this actuarial consultant national initiatives one. 
As a member of the National Initiatives team, your focus will be on improving our pricing sophistication by working on exciting projects that support our regional pricing team. Ongoing assessments of our pricing best practices and methods is also an important part of the rule in order to support advancement of our pricing function. As an actuarial consultant, you will mentor actuarial analysts while applying your knowledge to complex problems in the pursuit of solving business issues and answering business questions. In this role, your contributions will support the financial goals of the company and provide value to our customers. Rock on. Um, job responsibilities, data, research, extract, and manipulate complex data from all relevant sources. I can research and assess it, but like why is it complex and what are they talking about? I don't know. Identify relationships, problems, issues, and assess data quality. Um, that's just standard as an actuary that you have to um, reconcile your data, make sure the data quality is good. Um, as actuaries, we are part of a profession and we are bound by standards of practice within that profession and there are lots of standards of practice with regards to um, data and data quality and making sure that your data is good and appropriate for the analysis that you're doing before you even start your analysis. Actuarial and statistical methods. Create and validate models to answer business questions as assigned. I have built GLMs in Emblem. Um, one time I built a GLM in R by modifying someone else's code and I wouldn't be able to do it from scratch. Incorporate, understand, and transfer knowledge of current methods while ensuring completeness and accuracy. I guess I could do that. Review current methods against relevant best practices and recommend improvements as needed. I feel like I'm not the most up to date on best practices, but I also don't feel like things are moving that quickly in the actuarial space, that there are some crazy best practices, unless you're talking about machine learning, in which case I don't necessarily think I'm the most up to date person on machine learning. Like as part of my current job, I do review the outputs of machine learning models, but I wouldn't be and I do understand how they work theoretically, but I wouldn't be able to review a model and say it was done properly. Like I have to, I, I refer to the knowledge of the data scientists and the actuaries who are able to build the model. I just understand what it should be giving me and I can interpret the results. So I don't know. Efficiency, identify opportunities for automation of routine tasks. I love automating routine tasks. It's my, my favorite thing. Um, when co-ops come in and they do that, it just brings me such joy. When a co-op is like, this is inefficient, I'm gonna make it better, I'm like, I love you. Um, develop creative new approaches to problem solving, sure. Um, collaborate closely with various other teams to solve pro complex problems. I mean, sure, I work now with our data science team, I work now with our underwriting team, I work um, with our ops and planning team, who are the ones who like, get stuff implemented in the system. So yeah, that's something that I could probably do. Develop and deliver presentations to the actuarial groups. I love a PowerPoint. I mean, I so, mm, all right. If I'm doing an analysis, I hate putting the results of my analysis in a PowerPoint. Um, if you saw there was an article years ago that I just keep bringing up, um, Jeff Bezos mm, banned PowerPoints at Amazon. It's like, it's not an efficient way <laughs> to present information at a meeting. Um, I think PowerPoints are a great way to teach people new things um, because you want to control the flow of the conversation. You're like, first you learn this, then you learn this, then you learn this. When you're trying to present the results of your analysis, I much prefer a Word doc where it's written and like someone can pre-read it and understand the concepts and then you can have a meeting talking about the content of it. If you're using a PowerPoint, as visual support for your presentation that you're giving, it should not have a lot of words on it. Because then if there are a ton of words on your slide, then people are busy reading the slide instead of listening to what you're saying. However, if you make PowerPoints like that with not a lot of words on it, then they can't really be used as reference documents later. So if in three months someone wants to refer back to my presentation, well, there aren't a lot of words and therefore they don't really remember the context. So it's a little bit hard. It's much better to have a Word document people can read in advance and then you just have a com... Anyway, anyway that was a rant. Um, back to Wawonisa. Um, workflow management, develop effective plans that define activities, resources, and timelines. Sure, we love a Gantt chart. Um, track the status of various project timelines, tasks, and various activities. Sure. Um, qualifications. Let's see if I'm qualificationed. 
Undergrad degree in actuarial mathematics, yes. Associate of the Casualty Actuarial Society, I'm a fellow. Five years work experience in insurance or related, I have seven. Experience with machine learning methods or other modeling software such as MLM classifier or radar is considered an asset. Um, I have built models in MLM, although it has been probably like five years since I built a model in MLM. Um, and uh, I do have experience interpreting machine learning models, but I cannot build them. Um, robust knowledge of Microsoft op Office applications. I mean, got it. Ability to ask effective questions to elicit detailed and relevant information. I think I'm pretty good at that. I think I'm good at asking good questions. I think I'm bad at asking them tactfully. I think often what happens is when I'm asking those questions, I um, can come off as a little blunt, a little harsh, a little rude. But they're good questions to ask. I think that's enough companies to look at for now. Are you on the job hunt? Do you have any tips for me? Because if I'm gonna make a resume in the near future, leave resume tips below, please. While you're hanging out below, if you wanna thumbs up this video, subscribe to see more of my face. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for calling.